what's happening good people welcome to the channel i'm wes aka mr budget watch and today i'll be reviewing the san martin sn 044-g an original dive watch from the brand this was kindly provided to the channel at a discounted price but as you know that does not really impact my review you can find a link to this down in the description so San Martin as a brand have definitely improved their reputation over the years and are now known for making great quality watches at a reasonable price. Though more recently these prices have begun to increase somewhat. This is not only due to the financial situation we're currently in as the increases kind of started before this. Though this increase has gone up even more since that has happened. So here we have actually one of their more affordable ones coming in at sub 200. But does it have all the good stuff they're known for, or does this one cut corners? That's what we're going to uncover today. So starting with the size end, this one is very nice at 38mm in diameter. This of course increases to 425 if you include the crown. Look to look is a very nice 46.2, while the thickness is 12.3. Lug width, bog standard 20mm, which is always nice. And the screw down crown is 6.6. .6. All very nice and actually slim wrist friendly too. The case is constructed from 316L stainless steel and it has a flat sapphire crystal protecting the dial, which does have some generous AR, which is always nice to see. The supplied strap is a two piece silicone with a stainless steel buckle, but more on that later. The bezel, unidirectional, 120 click, and has a brushed steel insert. The water resistance 200 meters and we also have a screw down crown and screw down case back. The hands and indices and the loom pip are filled with C3 loom and finally it weighs 98 gram on the supplied strap. The SN also comes in a lot of fun summer colors. There's a blue and green which has a ceramic insert, then there's an orange, this yellow and a pale blue that all have steel. Finally, if you want something a little bit more subdued and you don't want the bright and bold colours, there's also a silver dial variant as well. To the styling, and I like it, I really appreciate that Sam Martin have added the yellow accents on the bezel as it really makes the whole watch fun and cohesive at the same time. Some mentioned in the unboxing that it was a little bit much in terms of the amount of yellow and i actually agree so because of this i've ordered a few different straps to turn this down some and if you can't cope with all the yellow then i'd suggest you probably do the same the insert though is well done it actually has a vertical brush finish instead of the usual circular and i actually think this really plays nicely with the pops of yellow on the numerals and markers you can find around it as for the bezel action it is superb the clicks are defined the motion is smooth yet crisp don't know how they've done that but it's really spot on here is what it sounds like so as you can hear it is very very satisfying there is however a little bit of back play less than half a click but other than that it feels rock solid the dial of the SN is surrounded by a brushed steel reho, which I'm glad to see, as yellow would have definitely been too much. Just in from this is a cleanly printed minute track and a mix of applied indices. The 12 houses an upside down triangle, with the majority being circular. That is, say for the 3, 6 and 9, which are all pill shaped. All these are bordered by a high polish accent. Under the 12, we've got that applied hex logo, which is slowly growing on me. Wasn't a fan at first, but it, now I'm seeing it more, it's definitely uh, growing on me. Again, this is well done like the rest of the uh, indices, and I'm actually glad Sam Martin now are creating a more cohesive thing with their branding. We all know that they had a mishmash uh, a while back, but now it's definitely becoming more cohesive, and I appreciate that. Above the 6, cleanly printed, 200 meter, 660 feet, automatic in black nicely done the hands have an area of loom that is shaped to mirror the pill shaped indices and you know what it works really well the shape can also be spotted on the high polish counterbalance on the second hand which has a lollipop towards the tip that is loom filled again like the indices the hands are accented in a high polish to offset all the brushing finally to the dial and this thing is bright and really does pop 
It also works surprisingly well with the steel, which I wasn't really expecting. The dial does have a very fine sandpaper texture like quality, but you'd only really notice that under macro. It's also clean, and best of all, fun, which is something we all need a little bit of. The case shape of this watch is a little bit subby esque though the brush lugs and slimmer look make it look a little bit more on the vintage side than the more rounded modern subbies. It does have those nice crown guards too which help protect the crown and I actually think they quite add to the aesthetic. The sides are all brushed and done to St Martin's high standards. It is very nice, cleanly done and uniform. You'll also spot the drilled lugs too which make strap changes that much easier and actually they don't detract too heavily from the styling either. The other side houses the signed screw down crown and it has the same hex logo you'll find on the dial. Again, cohesion. So flipping the watch over and you'll spot the now pretty much famous Sam Martin Shark. This is surrounded by a sea of bee blasted finish and bordered by a brushed outer ring that has all the specifications. All this looks really good and it really makes that high polished shock pop off the most subdued textures. So, so far so good, no real issues to address. Onto the strap though and it's actually pretty solid. It's probably not the best silicone I've had hands on with but it's not bad either. On the long side of the strap you'll spot 8 adjustment holes which are ideal for those with thicker wrists. Though those of us with slimmer wrists may have to swap this out for something else but I'll show you that in a minute. This also should be an easy task given the uh, 20 mm lug opening. The short side has two keepers, one of which is held in place, though it can actually be removed, and the other is free moving, which is always nice to see and does help maintain the excess that you get. This brings me nicely to the buckle. It's nice, solid, branded, mainly brushed, but does have some tasteful polished accents on the side. On the inner side of the shop you'll spot the Sam Martin Hex logo on their brand name on the other side. It's all very nicely done, cohesive again and just works well. As for the material, it's supple and quite flexible, yet somehow isn't all that soft and squidgy. Now for example, I know it's weird, I know, but the uh, Sam Martin Willard homage I have has a very nice soft supple strap but it's actually quite squidgy and soft. This one though is a little bit more rigid, but yet it still maintains its flexibility. Don't know how it works, but it does. Very strange. But how does it wear? Well, it's pretty comfortable and wears really nice. I would advise that Sam Martin actually add an extra adjustment hole though for you guys that have slimmer wrists than myself, so you can enjoy it as well. But that aside, the strap is very nice to wear, even though it's an odd one. It fits really nicely on the last adjustment hole, so again, does need another one for you guys with slimmer wrists. You guys with thicker wrists though, you're in luck, this one will fit you perfectly fine. The downturn lugs also help the strap sort of conform and flow nicely over the wrist. Though, the case back does make this one sit a little bit high so the lugs don't actually hug your wrist. It doesn't really make the watch less comfortable, but it does look a little bit odd when you're viewing it side on. As a whole, it's really nice to wear, though it's definitely not the most comfortable. So, so far we've not really had any major complaint until now. The movement. You already know, it's the 8215. I'm not even going to rant about it as you already know my thoughts. And I wish Sam Martin would have used the YN they used in their pilot's watch, which I reviewed a while back. It's way better in every single way. I also wouldn't mind a small bump in the price if they give us the new 8315. But I actually think this watch was released before that, so that wouldn't have been a possibility. Hopefully a version 2 will add that in as an option, but for now it looks like we're stuck with the 8215. Now the 8215 is not the worst movement, it's actually reliable, solid and quite accurate, though it's missing a few features that can be found on similarly priced rivals. In use though, it's actually pretty good, not Seiko or YN good, but it's still good. The action is smooth like the others, but you'll notice a little tactile bump that you don't really get with the other uh, alternatives. The crown though on the SN is great, brilliant size, solid grip and the crown guards don't interfere at all, so all positive here. I think though as a community we all just want to see the back of this movement now but as it's cheap I don't think that's happening anytime soon. Luckily though it is good to use and I think Sam Martin have implemented it quite well in this one. There's also no date either so yeah there is that as well. Luckily though 
I think the loom on this one does actually redeem the movement choice a little bit and does sort of soften the blow of that. It's C3, applied very generously. I mean, this one, I will admit, it's not going to win any contests, but it's bright, well applied, so it's not all patchy and horrible. Really nice fill on it. And it does have some solid staying power, giving enough charge. And I've actually seen this glow subtly first thing in the morning after being charged late at night. So that is quite impressive. So all in all, this is a superb watch with minimal flaws and it would be perfect for the summer. It's well executed, bold, and most importantly, fun. The only real negative is the movement choice. Although solid and reliable, it's old and needs to be put to rest. Although I don't think that's happening anytime soon, like I've mentioned already. As is the price point, £170. I think that should be more 150 in that region, then it would be a very, very good and compelling buy. If San Martin ever make a V2 though, I think they should give us the same quality on offer here, but give us a slightly softer strap, maybe a floor line and a better movement, and I would happily hand over some money for this. Like I said, it's an original design, it's well made, and it's got so much good about it, just the movement really holds it back. So what do you think of this one? Is it price right or do you agree with my thoughts? Let me know. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss any uploads. And of course, follow me on social media at Mr. Budget Watch. Thanks again. I'll see you soon.